question. The legacy of leadership knows no age boundaries. In the next session, we will engage in a conversation with two of the most dynamic leaders, three of the most dynamic leaders of our times, drawing from their wealth of experience to gain insights and inspiration and wisdom on women's impact and leadership in business. The next session is aptly titled, Women Mean Business. I'd like to call on stage our esteemed panelists, Zia Modi, co-founder and managing partner, AZB and Partners. Kalpana Morparia, former chairman, JP Morgan, South and Southeast Asia. And Falguni Nair, founder and CEO at Nika. Can we have a huge round of applause? This session, stellar panel, will be moderated by my colleague Siddharth Zarabi, managing editor at Business Today TV. Hi, good evening once again and uh, thank you very much to Faguni, Kalpana and uh, Zia for being here. Uh, these three ladies uh, represent uh, the epitome of business in their own individual ways. Zia Modi uh, was once uh, described by Mr. Mukesh Amani as more than a lawyer. Uh, Kalpana is someone who's actually been uh, one of the pioneers of uh, banking and they are perhaps uh, very few, uh, if, if none, in the banking space. And Faguni, you've, you're the sort of flavor of the day, of course, uh, uh, taking, taking beauty to Bharat, as it is said. But I want to keep the focus on the conversation on women mean business. And uh, this title we chose because Smriti Irani, who was here last year, uh, used to keep telling me that when you do these conversations with business leaders, do ask them that, um, uh, have they made their own wills, for example? But that's not the question I want to start with. Uh, I want to start with the issue of women representation in corporate India and on boards. And Zia Modi, I start with you. Uh, there's a norm, a rule, which said the top 1,000 companies need to have a one woman uh, director, and we've kind of uh, had very good progress with that. Given what has happened, is it time for the norms to change and take that norm and say all companies in India should have at least one woman as a director. You ask the chief guest, please. <laughs> I'm setting that up. <laughs> Don't set me up. Uh, I think law has improved, actually. And uh, before this became mandatory, there was a lot of debate. Should we, should we not? Should it be merit-based? Uh, is it tokenism? How do we find a really bright woman? Why should we just pick a woman for being a woman? So my view has always been that, uh, you know, I've said it quite often, as a law firm, we make money because of a lot of stupid men, <laughs> right? So I don't see why we have to be geniuses and men have to be average. Find women they will grow into the space that you give them. And I think that uh, just empirically and from studies, it's been proved that if you have more than one woman on the board, the debate is a lot better, the women feel less diffident, they don't feel like tokens, and they open up much more and contribute to the discussion much more. So I uh, have always come out on the side that if it's mandatory, it's a good mandatory. And I think it's proved itself to be so. Now, do I think that every board should have a woman and how low down the value chain you want to go? Uh, it's a policy decision. I think that, you know, we have to take steps at a time which are feasible. Uh, you look at the panchayat system. Yes. You have the women sitting and the husband sitting at, standing at the back. But I am convinced... And you now have a law for 33% yeah, at the highest... Yeah, but I am convinced in 10 years you won't see those men. 
in 10 years we won't see those men they won't be standing at the back okay so the women will be doing what they need to do and they will figure out what is right for the panchayat so i think uh, it's india you know it's decades of different culture we are changing and sometimes we uh, move in uh, decades uh, in many sectors karna that same question to you but with the added bit that there are far too many directorships and far uh, lesser women who would qualify to be uh, directors is that uh, correct and what would you add to what zia just told us so let me begin yeah a closer close please let me begin with sorry about that let me begin with a confession you know sometime in 2005 sebi had constituted a primary market advisory committee i was on that committee and there was a proposal to actually mandate one woman on boards i was the most vociferous opponent of that requirement because i felt if you mandate that a woman needs to be on the board you're belittling us we should be there in our own right and not because of our gender anyway the powers that be decided what they did and in 2014 it when the companies act got uh, the new companies act came and it was mandated so and it was mandated that you must have one woman then it became mandated that you must have one independent board director yes yeah. but i serve on the board of two global companies and there the proxy advisory firms and large institutional investors actually vote down the chair of the nomination and governance committee if you don't have at least 30% women so far as us boards are concerned and 40% women so far as uk boards are concerned and i want to narrate a really amusing incident i chair the nomination and governance committee of a us company board and we had 30% women and i got the least votes when i there we get elected every year i got the least vote it was so ironical that a woman was got the least vote because she didn't have 40% on the board oh. we've still since then fixed it so hopefully next time i'll do better so if you were the head of that committee today would you uh, what recommendation would you give i think india has done really well in terms of increasing awareness in terms of gender diversity so maybe i was wrong in the early 2000s to oppose it the one area where i felt very passionately that we do need reservations was political parties and tickets because there the door was shut on us and that's already happened and that's already happened so you can imagine my joy when i saw that wonderful faguni um, is it lonely in the boardroom for a woman you you know you are a founder you you run the company but in your entire experience as a business person is it lonely for women uh, in the board i think uh, on record nika has 40% of women directors so wonderful Get a round a of applause place. for that <laughs> uh, so i think um, i don't feel lonely at the top but i think um, yeah i just feel that um, i mean little bit like what kalpana said that it's important to be i think for women it's important to be recognized for their work rather than any uh, gender specific quota you know and as far as that recognition exists and i always say that you know we hold half the sky like 50% should be the why should we accept anything less than 50% so i would definitely be happier when we reach that full potential everywhere i think across our organization also we have 47% women and i wish we can be 50% so yeah uh, and i'm glad you say that because the india today group i don't have the numbers but i can tell you uh, some of the finest journalists in this country some of the best backroom operators of very hard working people are uh, women and we are very proud of that uh, kalpana i am coming to you and this is to deal with in the time that we have left with work life balance and i must tell our viewers that uh, Uh, some years back you were quoted as uh, you know uh, life is work and vice versa uh, is 70 hours working practical especially for women because mr narayan murthy called for it what are your views now you know after you quoted me on saying life is work and work is life i'm surprised you even asked me this question <laughs> but actually the one person who's best suited to answer this 
is sitting to my right. Uh, that's so why I'm I didn't choose a lawyer first, because lawyers work uh, probably 100 hours a week. No, if uh, life is work, there's no question of counting hours. As you probably know, I retired from full-time employment two years ago. But you must uh, be busier still. This week was a particularly difficult week because we had three boards all in the same week, one in New York and two in Mumbai, and I had a 22-hour day. <laughs> Zia, your views on that? Yeah. Because uh, lawyers and their working hours are no big secret. I don't think it's just lawyers uh, because a lot of lawyers, especially the younger ones, have this work-life balance thingamajig. Journalists uh, too. <laughs> I've actually, I, I think if you want to be a leader, if you want to make something special of your life, unfortunately, as a woman, uh, you sacrifice the work-life balance. And I think uh, a lot of women here in the audience and the ones you're going to give awards to have gone through that particular capital G called guilt. Uh, but I think that with being smart, uh, creating an ecosystem that lets you get more hours of the day, not doing rubbish that you don't need to do, uh, systematically planning your life in a way that you cut out the irrelevant, is the only way to get more time for yourself, your work, and the biggest loser of them all, unfortunately, your family. So I think that, uh, I don't think much will change uh, for the next few years. And for the women who have the passion, the ambition, the wanting to be there and wanting to have standing, this is the cost, unfortunately. And unfortunately, Jack Welch said it himself. So it applies to men as well, right? Faguni, is that a cost that you have paid in your career? Um, I think, uh, if I may see, so at this point in my life, I'm quite happy about work-life balance. I think I'm one of the few people who doesn't like to work late. I rarely work on the weekends, so I'm happy with the balance it, so, now. Sorry to interrupt you, but isn't that because you're an owner rather than just a... No, no, I work very hard. You can ask all my <laughs> teams. I think uh, you can ask them, I think, every uh, 70 hours or more. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm able to balance it, if I may say so. But yeah, I think there have been parts of my career where I've worked very, very hard and I have felt that the work-life uh, balance was not there. And I think at that point, when I think hard about it, and my advice to women used to be that learn to juggle. And the juggle that I did was that, like when the kids were young, you know, a couple of days I'll work very late, but then other days I'll leave at five or six so that you know importance of having that evening with your kids taking them to a park so i always tell women that when you if you can't manage work-life balance on a regular basis at least juggle and try to achieve the balance because i think even that's important i think family and time for family is very important okay very quick question and i'll go across the panel faculty but to you uh, uh, the third point uh, for today uh, pay uh, there are studies and data that suggest that women tend to get paid lesser for the same job versus men. Now, I'm not citing examples, but what could you share with regard to your company in terms of do you look at this proactively and try and address this? Um, I think we do. Uh, we, we definitely want to be an equal opportunity employer and we don't want uh, a gender or any kind of biases, including locational bias sometimes, to come in the way of employment. And I think best person for the job is the policy that we uh, follow. I think uh, having said that, uh, do uh, typically women, uh, ha are there biases where women are getting paid lesser for the same job? Probably yes. And like Zia said, these are due to years of uh, conditioning and maybe women not negotiating enough and uh, but yeah I think negotiate I mean I always feel that negotiation is something women need to strengthen as a skill set and I think uh, maybe they don't they, 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 they're not they don't care for it probably so I think sometimes it happens. Zia do uh, women lawyers get paid uh, equally as men of course they absolutely. are underrepresented in the profession. Absolutely no question at least in our firm, and I think across most firms. Because don't forget, uh, men or women, lawyers are generally bright. 
and so they know their worth. And uh, if they don't feel they're getting their worth, they leave. And right now, the most important thing for any service provider is talent and retention. So it's so easy to walk across that you don't want to let people going for a few bucks. So, and I also think that it doesn't matter if you come from a wealthy family or not. Uh, being compensated as you deserve is a matter of self-respect. It's not that you don't need the money or why are you asking for more money. You should get what you deserve. And a lot of service providers, and I'm sure a lot of firms, have KRAs, right? You slot here, you slot here, you slot here, you slot here. It's gender agnostic. But I think the main thing is for any employer to understand that you can't let women, just because their nature is a little more diffident, not get paid uh, what they will ultimately go back to their seat and say, I feel undercompensated. Uh, Kalpana, final question uh, of the panel today to you. And was there any time when a woman colleague came up to you and said, uh, listen, I'm not paid enough. I do twice the job. I, in fact, uh, run my home as well. Uh, you got to take care of my compensation. And if that happened, can you tell us how did you deal with it? Again, I think somewhat of a misdirected question to someone who spent a career in ICICI, where, as you know, at one time, there were 60% executive directors on the board who were women and the men were in the minority. So this whole concept of, you know, looking at gender in terms of hiring, attrition, compensation, was frankly foreign to us. And uh, I know it's gained a whole lot of attention now and a lot of companies are doing uh, pay gap uh, analysis. I, on all the boards that I'm sitting, we've actually done this study and each one of them has actually, through an independent agency, determined that there is absolutely no pay gap. But if it exists, of course, we should address it. You spoke about uh, foreign, but I can end this uh, panel by saying, uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are three women who represent the best and the brightest of women who actually mean business. Faguni, Kalpana, Zia, thank you very much for your time. Thank here. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Siddharth, for conducting such a, an enthralling session. I'd, I'd like to request our panelists to stay back for this one. And uh, I'd like to call on stage Alok Nair, COO, Business Today, to express a token of our gratitude to our panel.